All right, so now that we got our, our PowerFlex commissioned, our PowerFlex 525 commissioned, and we have our PowerFlex 525 in our actual processor, and we have it in our program, right? The one that we, we've been building upon, right? So we have it down here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add our controls now. All right, so we need a new task at this point. We're gonna call this uh, PowerFlex. And then, uh, yeah, we'll call this PowerFlex controls, or we'll call this PowerFlex. Yeah, that's fine. PowerFlex controls, and we're going to keep this as a uh, periodic. And notice that the periodic task we currently have, um, the the virtual axis that we have is 75 milliseconds. The um, I'm not sure what the fault handling what we put that as, but let's actually let's actually uh, come back and and verify that before we do this. Because that is one thing I normally do is I make sure that I put this at um, I make sure that I highlight that and put that in there so I always do that because I want to make sure that when I come through and I want to add a new one like I'm doing now right I know how to do that I can come in here and say okay well this is the power flex controls or in this case yeah power flex control we'll say control and then we'll call this so we'll, we'll, we'll time this, and uh, this is 75, this is one, 125, this is going to be 47, and this is 80, this is 55. Let's keep this, or uh, 50, let's keep this at like 55. Sounds good to me. Um, just timing wise, um, just make sure your timing is right. That's all we're doing here. And you can always set your priorities to make sure that things do accordingly, so you can actually have them set that way. But I like to do it a certain way. So that's just me. Uh, and we'll call this uh, Trainer PowerFlex. Uh, or actually, let's call this, um, let's call this PowerFlex uh, 525. Okay, so we're gonna have that in there. Now we're gonna come in here and add our main program like we always do main or main routine main routine and that's just to have that and then we're going to specify that so we're going to first kill this uh, we're going to come in here and specify the properties main configuration and then go ahead and add that just like that boom done so now we have our conductivity between our task to our actual um, program level right and then the program level to our main routine level, right? So let's add a new routine. Let's call this uh, PowerFlex 525, not 225, <laughs> 525 uh, controls. Okay, so now we have that in there. Uh, we're gonna keep this simple right here. And uh, first and foremost, obviously, JSR, right? So JSR. And then we're going to have our trainer, or we're going to have our, our PowerFlex controls, which is right here, right? So we have that in there now. Um, okay, so now let's assemble everything just to get everything there. Ice and scanning, get everything done. Okay, and I did cut on my servo loop so that we do have all of our, because we're going to actually run this on a on our trainer. So we're going to actually start this on our trainer so I will do that and then we're going to come in later so I'm going to show you some basic controls now All right so it's going to add some basic controls in here and then what I'm going to do so we'll just come in here and throw in some bits and we'll do start and we'll do stop and then what what so what I'd like to actually show too, and this is going to be, I mean, we already have a state machine that does all of this, right? So let's actually come in here and let's monitor, actually, let's close that one out because this is the more important part right here, right? So we have a stop command, we have a start command, right? So this is, this is the important side to this. We just copy these bits, right? So, and the key thing of, to it is, is it really you can use these over here because they're one shots almost, if you think about it. Um, they're just gonna be, or, or we can actually come in here and, and make sure that 
we use the proper things right here like this would be the start command boom it's one one time though so we can do the same properties here that we're doing there and then you know have it just like that right because these are the same outputs and inputs and stuff like that we, we're using from the state machine so if we think about it that way then we need to actually incorporate our actual stuff in, in inside of here that we've used before so it's almost fair to say that you could use your start command and then come over here and basically tie that in up here right so this is a start command and and I don't want to confuse you right to that point but if you follow the rest of the videos of what we've did so far then you kind of know the things that we've done we're doing but if you haven't seen those it's, it's very effective if you do see those actually this so we're gonna change this a little bit we're gonna call this we're gonna do the start and then we'll call it stop we'll we'll actually do this slightly different we're gonna call this we'll do some one shots in here and we'll call this uh, power flex 525 ons and then we're going to make a couple instances of that let's just say 10 and then that way we have the usage of these that we can use anywhere right that's what i like to do right so and what we're, what we're really kind of doing is we're going to do our start and stops and we're going to monitor those too so uh what you want to do too is is you can verify that it, it is actually on before you do anything so you don't want to be, I mean, you can naturally just cut it off, but in our case, we'll call this trainer uh, and then drag down to our inputs and monitor that the drive is actually active before you shut it off. But in our case, I mean, you can also argue the fact that you don't even need to do, to do that. So um, let's come in over here and let's just call the tag. We're going to alias this tag. So we're going to call this, uh, uh, start BFD. Well, our let's call this start F start PF 525, not 225, 525. I keep doing that. Uh, and then actually, this is the stop, right? Let's call this stop, stop. And then we're going to alias this down to our actual trainer. Trainer. And again, come down here to PowerFlex. And this is an output. We're going to call this a stop bit. So we'll just alias that over. Again, aliasing the bit is, is so much effective because you know what it is as a, as a descriptor. Because you're using a tag. Like the, the tag structure of an actual... Think about this, right? The tag structure now of a control logics is so powerful because you get to, that carries over with everything. So you almost, if you do it properly, you don't need to have descriptors on top of things because it just, it adds that much more complexity and just, it just kinda, it, it, it confuses the fact, right? So if you do it properly, like this is stop PF525. You can understand too, by looking at this, it is going to the trainer down here, it's going to the trainer PF525, the output stop, right? It's, that, it's so simple to do that, right? So, and this is the reason I do, I do, I like doing the, the outputs like this. Uh, I like aliasing stuff. So this is the start, and then we'll call this the same thing, right? Start PF525, and then we'll alias it out, right? So we're doing simple controls here. We're not doing anything complex simple controls and I'm gonna do the speed controls um, just like I did the if you can think about it just like I did if you've seen the last couple videos the same uh, thing that we we did for our speed controls we're gonna do for here All right so what we're gonna do is instead actually let's use this active bit now here I think it looks better it'd be better now here and we'll, we'll do this we'll, we'll say down here and we'll say not active as well so we'll copy this and we'll conclude this and say not active here so in this one what we want to do is control the speed command 
Okay, so I'm going to do a move. Actually, do a compute. I think a compute would be better because you want to multiply, and I'll show you why. Um, if you think about this, so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to come in here and we're going to my speed controls, which is here. And the speed control of the servo system that we used before, which is based upon the speed pot that I can turn, right? Based upon the speed pot that I can turn, goes all the way up. And I've scaled it properly. So I'm going to actually use that. So we'll actually go in here and grab this tag because it's already aliased. And then we're going to come over here and then we're going to grab this, paste it in here. And then we're going to multiply it by 10. And why are we multiplying it by 10? It's because of the simple fact of uh, when you think about the way the PowerFlex, and this is in the manual, we can, we can actually drag this up in the manual as far as like speed controls and stuff like this and, and go through this if you want to. But as far as like parameter editing, drive parameters, I think it's, uh, I'd have to really dig down it and and uh, show you exactly where the, the commands are and stuff like that. But the, the gist of what I'm, I'm actually explaining to you is, yeah, but before I dig down too, too deep into that, just what I'm explaining to you is basically if every 100, uh, every 100 would be, every 10 would be a, a hertz. So every 100 would be 10 hertz. So 600 would be the equivalent to 60 hertz. I believe it's, actually I'm, I'm, I'm actually saying that wrong. It's 6,000 would be the equivalent to 60 hertz. So we need to think about it as every 100 would be one hertz. So if you think about this, if we multiply this right now, that would be only be 300. So we need to go 100. Actually, yeah, let's leave that like just like that. Let's come in here and I'll show I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just just a second. So we'll call this uh, power flex 525 speed command. Right. And then we're going to alias this again. OK, we're going to come in here and alias it. And we're going to go down to trainer. Then we're going to alias it to speed output frequency okay so that's there done now what we can also do too is come in here and do a move just to verify that everything if, when it's not active goes to zero this is a not I mean you don't really have to do this but it's just something that you could do if, if you wanted to um, so let's do this let's assemble this right quick and we'll start the system so okay we have that that's in there that's indicating that it's pushing a zero into there this is the command well uh, let's actually add some some uh, uh rung down here so you can see what the drive is doing so let's do a couple moves and then we'll do a no operation as well so i'll i'll do this is what i do so that it doesn't if you do a no operation on the back side you can actually see the stuff you want to see so first and foremost i want to see the drive so i want to see the trainer i want to know the input i want to know that the drive is actually running the output frequency that's all i really care about for this instance i want to just to show you the fact that it's running. And you see how that will assemble because it's not actually moving it into there. It's not. It's a no operation. It's not gonna do anything. If it doesn't connect from here to here, it doesn't do anything, okay? So just understand that and, and ladder, it doesn't do it, right? So that's why the no operation is very effective. So coming back, um, let's actually start our client. Let's actually start the client. Actually, I think we can just start this Green, maybe start this. Yeah, I think we have a perimeter pass thing. I don't want to go through all that. So let's just start the, the client real quick and start client. And then we'll pick the client that we had. So we'll run a client. And I believe this was a 3830 project servo client. We'll start that client. And while that client is starting, we'll actually, because it does take just a second we'll go ahead and speed the video up
All right, so now that we have our client up, what we're gonna do is go to our servo screen and we'll start the controls. So we'll go ahead and make sure that we, and sometimes uh, let's just clear, clear all the faults and stuff like that, just to make sure. And there is somewhat of a lag in here. So, and we are running. Okay, so let's go back to our actual program. And we can see that we're controlling it only to, so we didn't actually, we didn't actually scale it right. I, I thought it was supposed to be 100, but again, going down to it, we wanted to make sure that it was right. So we need to be in the thousands because we're only running like three hertz right now. So uh, this is actually running. So the speed command I have based upon the speed pot. Okay. So, and this did start because it is actually running so you can see the active bit is on right so let's change the speed we'll change the speed so this has actually got the, the you can probably hear the servo running but you can change the speed and that actually changes the output right so this the frequency down here at the very bottom you can think about this close to 30 30 hertz right now is what we're running so this is exactly what you want to do so as far as the speed controls and stuff like that now we will we'll, what we're going to do is actually do some more complex controls for this but I want to show you the the fact of it you controlling the client off so if I hit the stop button what it does for the logic is it comes in here and stops it you see that that one shot so it comes in here and actually stops that. Now, I did notice one thing I did do, right? So I didn't change this one shot. So this is why I do system testing, is I didn't change that one shot. And the reason I noticed that is because that bit was latched, okay? That bit should not be latched. So let's do another start and let's do another stop. So again, we're starting the system, okay? coming in here and we're verifying that the controls are running this the drive is active the trainer this the p uh, the the new powerflex 525 is active right the speed controls is actually controlling the way it should uh, we want to go back and actually come back now and stop it okay then we want to verify that it did stop correctly you see that did stop correctly and the reason I'm using the active bit is to actually to push the, the commands in here, the, the speed commands, is basically because if I just use a stop bit, then naturally it's not it's not gonna decel the proper way. It's gonna decel right here, and then when it actually stops, it's gonna it's gonna change the, the state of the active bit, right? So the active bit is based upon generally speaking in any a PowerFlex drive and not a 525, but if I, and a PowerFlex drive is based upon the induction of the motor, so it's reading back the torque and it wants to know that the motor is running because most complex systems are sophisticated enough that way they know, especially ones that use, like if you if you actually use this drive, this PowerFlex 525 with an encoder, with a feedback motor, with a feedback encoder, it will, that active bit will correspond with torque. <clears throat> with induction right so understand that you need to have this active bit in here because the, what the active bit is doing is is not pushing the change of speed until stopped okay and the only reason we're doing that is just for justification and making sure that hey the things are there so this is a base implementation real short and sweet real easy implementation of a start stop system based upon a finite state machine of a actual PowerFlex drive. So we've actually added everything. We've done some basic controls. We're gonna come back and, and add a, we're gonna start adding some more complex controls in here. So in the very next couple videos, we're gonna do that and actually have that more fluent. So hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you guys on the next one.